Now, thanks now when we solve for an inequality. An inequality is one that doesn't have an equal sign. So it could have a greater than, less than, less than or equal to and so forth. So here we have a greater than sign. Um, I will explain this via example. This way we could understand it better. So first step, we treat the inequality as an equality. So we do x squared minus 7x plus 6 equal to 0. This particular quadratic equation can be factored as x minus 1 and x minus 6 equal to 0. So that would mean that x minus 1 is equal to 0 and x minus 6 is equal to 0. x would equal to 0. Uh, oops. x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 6. And those two values are what we call the critical values. So let's put 0 there, 1 there, 6 there. Plug in an easy number less than 1, because that is a critical value. Um, so let's mark the critical values here. So that's a critical value. That's a critical value. An easy number less than 1 is 0. So f of 0 would be 0 squared minus 7 times 0 plus 6. We get 6, which is a positive number. Pick an easy number between 1 and 6. Let's pick 2. 2 squared minus 7 times 2 plus 6. That would give us negative 4, which is a negative number. F is greater than... Sorry. Pick an easy number greater than 6. So F of 7 would be 7 squared minus 7 times 7 plus 6, which is 6. That is a positive number. So the function is greater than 0 there. It's greater than 0 there. So the intervals where the function is greater than 0, in other words, the solution, would be from negative infinity all the way up to 1. So all of that and we never include the critical value, hence I'm putting an open parenthesis, union. We start at 6, but we don't include 6, and all the way up to infinity. So the next problem here, we want to find x squared minus 2x greater than or equal to negative 1. The right hand side is not zero, so we are going to treat it um, as an equality, so equal to negative one. But we realize that the right hand side is not equal to zero, so we move that negative one to the left hand side. We can factor this as x minus one times x minus one equals zero which would imply x is equal to 1, and that is a critical value. So let's pick 1, and to the left of 1, we pick an easy number. Um, easy number would be 0, so let's plug in f of 0. f of 0 is 0 squared minus 2 times 0, which gives us 0. So at 0, we have 0. And we want to find... what happens to the function to the right of 0, so sorry, right of 1, 
f of 1 would be 1 squared minus 2 times 1, we end up getting negative 1. So at x is equal to 1, we end up getting a value of negative 1. So let me draw the axis here so things are clearer. So for any value less than zero or less than one, we need to figure out the behavior. So when f is negative two, we have negative two squared minus two times negative two, which is four plus four, eight, which is a positive number. So it seems like things are positive there, things are positive there also. And at one, we ended up getting a negative number, which is negative one. And f of two would be two squared minus two times two, I don't want to do it this way, um, let's try it an easier, try an easier approach, so let's move x squared minus 2x plus 1 equal to 0. I've, let's translate that to an inequality where the function is greater than or equal to 0. So I successfully made the right inside 0. So now that would be our function f of x. Um, so let's see. We already know the critical value is 1. So we have to pick a number less than 1 and plug it in that function. So f of 0 would be an easy number. 0 squared minus 2 times 0 and plus 1, which gives us 1. So things are positive over here. And pick an easy number greater than 1. Let's pick 2. It's 4 minus 4 plus 1. We get 1. So it is positive there. And it is exactly equal to 0 right here. So where do we satisfy that inequality. We satisfy x squared minus 2x plus 1 greater than or equal to 0 on that interval and that interval and at that point because at that point the function is 0. So the function is positive for all values um, of x. In other words, this particular inequality is satisfied for all real numbers. But this inequality is no different from that inequality because we simply rewrote it so that the right hand side would be zero. So the answer here is negative infinity to positive infinity. So what do we do when we have a rational function? So when we have a rational function, we simply have to identify critical values by setting the numerator equal to zero and the denominator equal to zero, which would give us asymptotes. So let's set the numerator equal to zero. So which would mean negative x, negative four equals zero, 
x would be equal to 4. Set denominator equal to 0. This would mean x plus 7 is equal to 0, x is negative 7. Now this is a troublemaker because this would correspond to a vertical asymptote, in other words, a hole. And that is a critical value as well. So now we can partition the real number line from negative 7, negative infinity, negative 7, 0 and positive 4. Our critical values are negative 7 there and 4. So let us pick an easy number less than negative 7. The easiest one would be negative 8 and plug it in the function which is right over there. Negative 8 negative 4 divided by negative 8 plus 7 negative 12 over negative 1 we get positive 12 so the function is positive there pick an easy number between negative 7 and 4 0 is easy 0 minus 4 over 0 plus 7 we end up getting a negative number function is negative there. Pick an easy number greater than 4. I'm going to pick 5. Negative 5, negative 4 divided by 5 plus 7. Have negative 9. Over 12 which is a negative number. So things are zero right over or right at four, but between negative seven and four, we have a negative number and uh, four and infinity, we have negative numbers for the function. And we want to find values where the function is less than or equal to zero. So the function is negative for all values from negative seven up to four. And since it is less than or equal to zero, it is equal to zero at four. And from four to infinity, it is negative. So the solution here, is from negative 7 all the way up to infinity but we don't include negative infinity because that corresponds to a vertical asymptote So here we have the right hand side um, greater than, or sorry, right hand side as one. So let's translate that to a function where the right hand side is zero. They are equivalent. So whatever we find for here would also be the answer there. So Let's find the common denominator and simplify. So minus x plus 1 over x plus 1 greater than or equal to 0. That would give us 2x minus x minus 1 over x plus 1 greater than or equal to 0, which is simply x minus 1 over x plus 1 greater than or equal to 0. Now we have to set numerator equal to zero. And solve for x. So x minus one is zero, which would imply x is positive one. Then we set denominator
to zero and solve for x. x plus one would equal zero. That would imply x is equal to minus one. Mind you that this is a vertical asymptote or a hole. They are one in the same. So let's draw the real number line. Um, at negative one, there is a hole. Um, so why don't I just draw a hole here? And I have the numer the function becoming zero at one. So that is one, negative one. So we have to pick an easy number less than negative one f of negative 2, where f is that function that we rewrote. Keep in mind, this part is equivalent to that part. Whatever answer we get here is an answer to that. So <clears throat> f of minus 2 would be minus 2 minus 1 over minus 2 plus 1. Minus 3 over minus 1, we get negative 3. So the function is positive. And pick an easy number between negative 1 and 1. Let's pick 0. 0 minus 1 over 0 plus 1. We get negative 1 over 1. Negative 1, it is negative there. And f of 2 would be... 2 minus 1 over 2 plus 1. We have 1 over 3. It's a positive number there. So we want to find intervals where the function is um, greater than or equal to 0. So this is our f of x. And we want to find intervals where it is greater than or equal to 0. So it is greater than 0 there. We don't include negative 1. It's greater than 0 there. And exactly at 1, the function is exactly equal to 0. And since we have a greater than or equal to sign, the solution is negative infinity to negative 1, union 1 to infinity. So let us try this one. Um, the rise inside is not 0, so we have to make it 0. So let's move everything to one side. And now we have a 0 right inside. The left hand side can be factored. It's x minus 2 times x minus 2. This would imply x minus 2 is equal to 0. x would be 2. Draw the real number line. The critical value we identified is 2. So pick an easy number less than 2. We'll pick 0, f of 0, mind you, that is our function. And these two are one and the same. Whatever answer we find here is the answer to the question also. So f of 0 would be 0 minus 2 times 0 minus 2, positive 4. The function is positive there. And when we plug in an easy number bigger than 2, let's pick 3, 3 minus 2, 3 minus 2, we end up getting 1, the function is positive. So, the function is positive everywhere, but the problem wants to know the places where the function is less than or equal to zero. So the function is positive everywhere, so the answer is not less than or equal to two, 
it's not greater than or equal to 2, but at 2, the function is exactly 0. So the function is never negative. In other words, it doesn't go below zero, but it is zero at x is equal to two. So our solution is x is equal to two because that is the only point which would satisfy our inequality because the function is positive everywhere and we are looking for places where the function f of x is less than or equal to zero. Now we have a rational inequality and when we have a rational inequality, we set the numerator equal to zero and solve for x x plus 5 would equal 0, which would imply x is negative 5. Set denominator equal to 0 and solve for x. x plus 2 equals 0, which would imply x is minus 2. Mind you, that is a vertical asymptote because if the denominator becomes zero the function is in trouble so there is a hole at negative two so that would be negative two and i need space here so let me do this again so negative five all at negative 2 and everything beyond. So pick an easy number less than negative 5. Let's pick negative 6. The function is x plus 5 over x plus 2. So we plug in negative 6 plus 5 over negative 6 plus 2, negative 1 over negative 4 we end up getting 1 over 4. So the function is positive over there. Pick an easy number between negative 5 and negative 2. Let's pick negative 3. So we get negative 3 over 5 over negative 3 plus 2. That is 2 over negative 1. We get a negative number. So negative and pick an easy number greater than negative 2. It's 0. 0 plus 5 over 0 plus 2, which is 5 over 2. We get a positive number. So, positive. So, our question is to identify intervals where the function is less than zero. So it is negative over here. We just have to test for one value. So negative over there. So the solution is from negative five up to negative two. And we cannot include negative two because that is a vertical asymptote. In addition, we want uh, to look at places where the function is less than zero, but even though um, the function is likely to be less than zero, as we approach negative two, we cannot include negative two because it is not part of the domain because it is um, a whole. It corresponds to a vertical asymptote.